So once you've done your scatter plot and you've determined that there looks like there is some sort of linear relationship between your variables, the next thing you want to do is figure out the strength of that linear relationship. So to do that, we're going to calculate what's called the correlation coefficient. Okay, and that's going to be a measurement that determines that strength of the relationship. Now there's two cor correlation coefficients. The first one is the population correlation coefficient. And the symbol for that is the Greek letter rho. Okay, so that's not a P. That's not a P, it's a, it's a Greek letter. Um, and it's pronounced rho. Okay, and that's going to be the correlation that's computed by using all possible values of, um, all possible pairs of data values taken from a population. And we know that typically that's not possible to actually get data from your entire population. So that's why we're going to focus on the linear correlation coefficient, which is computed from the sample data. Okay, and that's going to um, give us a measurement that tells us the strength and the direction of the linear relationship between the two variables. And that has a different symbol. Uh, the symbol for the linear correlation coefficient is a lowercase r. Okay, so rho is the population correlation coefficient, r is the linear correlation coefficient. Now there are different correlation coefficients um, and ways of like getting them. The one that we're specifically using in this section and the one that your textbook um, specifically wanted to use is called the Pearson product moment correlation coefficient. Okay, you really do not need to know that for any other reason than there's one question on your homework about what it's called. So just know it for that and then I'm never going to refer to that again. Um, I'm just always going to call it the linear correlation coefficient. Okay, so what is R? Well, R is going to be a number that ranges from negative 1 to positive 1. And just based off that value, it's going to tell us a lot about the relationship. So the closer that R is to negative 1 is indicative of a strong negative relationship, linear relationship. Okay, negative 1 would mean very, very strong negative. And then as you get closer to zero, that's going to indicate that there is a very weak linear relationship or um, no linear relationship at all. And then as you move towards positive one, that's going to indicate a strong positive linear relationship. Okay, so I have some examples here of different scatter plots. And let's just kind of estimate what we think R might be just by looking um, at those plots. So this first one here, we can see that that definitely looks like a linear relationship. Those points are in a very straight line. Um, and we see that it's negative. So in fact, I don't think that could be like a more perfect line. So I would say R for that would probably be about negative one. So that's a very strong negative linear relationship. Okay, the next one, we see that our points aren't so tightly clustered around a straight line, um, but it still looks pretty good, and it's definitely still a negative relationship. Um, the points are falling as you move to the right, so if I were to approximate that, I'd say that's probably about um, a linear correlation coefficient of like negative 0.9. And then as we get here, now it's starting to not look so good. Okay, so now they're much more scattered about. Um, you can still kind of see some sort of trend like in the negative direction. So I would say that's probably about like negative 0.5. Typically like above 0 0.7, 0 0.7, 0 0.75 is considered a strong um, relationship. And then like anywhere between like 0.7 or 0.5, negative 0.5 to positive 0.5, that's a pretty weak um, relationship. Okay, so those are the negative ones. And then here we can see that now like the slope of all of these graphs are positive because they're rising to the right. So that means R is going to be positive for all of those. Okay, and the closer it is towards a straight line, um, the closer R is going to be to positive 1. So that first one, that's probably about like 0.6. Next one's a lot better. It's probably about 0.9. And then that last one there, that looks pretty good. So that's probably a correlation coefficient of positive 1. 
Okay, so some properties of the linear correlation coefficient. So it's a unitless measure, so we'll never put units on it. Like we said, the value of r will always be between negative 1 and positive 1. Um, kind of a cool fact that if you interchange the values of x and y, the correlation coefficient will stay the same. Uh, same thing if you change the scale of x and y, r will still stay the same. And then it's good to point out that r is sensitive to outliers. So just know that if you are computing this with you know real data uh, and you have an outlier, you know you might have to make a judgment call about whether you want to remove that outlier from the data set before you uh, calculate your co correlation coefficient. Okay, so on the previous slide um, with those six graphs, I was basically just estimating what R might be. Of course, we don't want to actually do that in problems. We want to have a, a mathematical way of figuring it out. So over here at the top, we have our formula for how you actually calculate R. Okay, so that's the formula for the linear correlation coefficient. I am not going to read you that formula out loud. Um, it's, it's not a terribly tricky formula, but it's definitely tedious. And at this point in the semester, I don't want to do it by hand at all. So we're just going to skip that. And luckily, that's programmed in our nice expensive calculators. So we'll put them to good use. And we're just going to um, use our graphing calculator to get that value of R. OK, so example two says to compute the value of the linear correlation coefficient for the data from example one. We're going to be sticking with that data set from example one for this entire chapter, all of chapter 10. So um, I'm going to put in words what we're going to do in our calculator, and then I'll actually um, pull the calculator up on the screen and show you. So by default, your calculator actually does not calculate what R is. So just one time, we're going to have to go into all of our calculators and turn something on. And then from there on, we should be good. Okay, you won't have to do it again the rest of the semester unless you end up resetting your calculator at some point. Then you would have to go back through this process. So what we're going to do is we're going to go to the catalog in our calculator. And then we're going to turn the diagnostic on. And that's pretty much it. So we'll just do this one time. And I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so the catalog is the list of every single function in your calculator. And it is located above the zero. So you want to hit second zero. Okay, that's going to open up every single function or program. And then you got to go all the way down to diagnostic on. So this took me forever to scroll down. So I'm going to fast forward a little bit. So there we go. So get to diagnostic on, and then you'll click enter, and then click enter one more time to actually run it. Okay, and then when it comes up as done, um, then you're good. Okay, so now your calculator is actually programmed to figure out what R is when you go to another certain place in there. Okay, so I'll show you on the calculator where to go first, and then I'll put it in words after that. Okay, so you want to um, go to stat and then go over to calc. And then you're going to go to lin reg a plus bx. So there's two of them in there. Number four is linear regression ax plus b. That is not the right one. Okay, don't stop at four. We're never going to go to four. Okay, we want to go to eight. Um, linear regression a plus bx. So that's a really common mistake for students to go to the wrong one. So just be careful with that. And then what comes up when you press that, um, everything should be right by default. So L1 should be your X list, L2 your Y, frequency list should be blank. Don't worry about the regression equation. Um, just go to calculate. And then it's going to give you some values. And at the bottom there, is R. Okay, so R is about negative 0.944. Okay, so 
so I'll just write it in words in case you're taking notes. So you do stat, calc, and then go to lin, linear regression or lin, lin reg a plus bx. And then that's going to tell you your r value and your rounding rule for r if you want to make a note of it is three decimal places. So r is negative 0.944. And then from that value, that's going to kind of suggest to us what relationship um, there might be. So negative 0.9 is definitely like a strong relationship. And then it's negative because, well, r is negative. So the value of r suggests a strong negative linear relationship. We know it's linear because we did our scatter plot in the beginning. So strong negative linear relationship between a student's final grade and the number of absences a student has. And hopefully that makes sense that the more absences a student have, has, um, the lower their grade is.